Hello and welcome back to another video. In this problem, we're told to let g of x equal x if x is less than 1, 3 if x is equal to 1, 2 minus x squared if 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2, and x minus 3 if x is greater than 2. So we're asked to evaluate all of these following things. So here, first we have the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of the function. If we're approaching 1 from the left, these are values that are less than 1, which means that we are using this part of the piecewise function. So this is the limit of x. And the limit as x approaches 1 of x is just 1. And 2, we have the limit as x approaches 1 in general. And we can see, first of all, before we do it in general, let's do it from the right, because we've already done it from the left. From the right, we're looking at values of x that are greater than 1. So values that are greater than 1 approaching 1, that would fall into 2 minus x squared domain. Therefore, this is 2 minus 1 squared, plugging in 1. 2 minus 1 equals 1. Therefore, since we have found that the limit from the right and the left are equal to 1. This is equal to the limit itself. Um, let's just delineate these. Uh, 3, g of 1 is the value of the function actually at 1, not talking about any behavior approaching it. So if x equals 1, the function equals 3. So that's as simple as that. And then for 4, we have the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of g of x. So these are values of x that are approaching 2 but less than 2. So we're going to use 2 minus x squared. Plugging in 2, that's 2 minus 2 squared. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Number five, the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of g of x. These are values of x that are approaching 2 but greater than 2. So you have to use the part of the piecewise function for x greater than 2, x minus 3. And we can plug in 2 to get 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. And finally, six, the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x. From the, re from the right, it's negative 1. From the left, it's negative 2. Therefore, the limit itself does not exist. For the limit to exist, it has to approach the same value from the left and the right. And finally, we are asked to graph the function. So I will do that on a separate piece of paper, just so we don't run out of space. And so this is our function be to sketch a graph of this function in the xy plane. So first, let's do the easy part. y equals x if x is less than 1. So this is a linear function with a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 1, which means we go to the right at 1 and then up 1 that point here. This is an open circle because at x is equal to 1, it's equal to something else. So it starts there, and then we follow these two points, and for all values of x less than 1, just going off to infinity, it follows that function. At x equals 1, we have a closed circle at 3, because that's the actual value of the function. Um, going to ignore this for a second, but instead use x minus 3. So if x is greater than 2, we have x minus 3, so that's a y-intercept of negative 3, and then a slope again of 1, so we go over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. And then we start here, x is greater than 2, and go off to infinity. And then in between here, we have 2 minus x squared, which is negative x squared plus 2. So this is going to take a couple extra steps. So we have the general quadratic function right here. 
with the negative out front, that means we have to reflect it over the y-axis. Sorry, over the x-axis. And then the plus two means we have to move it up two units. And now this matters. This function has these values if x is between one and two. So at one, it's actually at this point right here. It's still open, but it meets the same point that y equals x does. And then at x equals two, it goes to this point right here. It's a closed circle because x is equal to two for this value. And so it goes a little bit like this. And now we can erase these intermediate functions and get the full graph of our function g of x.